Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest is a financial advisor who is truly passionate about making sure people invest in themselves the right way. Please welcome Jeff Gardner. Thank you so much Hi, for being Jeff. here. Thanks for having me. We're really happy to have you because we like to talk, talk like to talk money here. Especially her. I do. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> right. It's a good conversation to have, right? Yeah. Absolutely. But how soon is too soon or is it ever too soon to start saving money and investing in yourself? Mm. It is never too soon. In fact, that's that's the what I focus on most with clients. Yes. A lot of people in my industry seem to focus on rate of return, and I focus on rate of savings. Yeah. Um, it's very important to get started and get started early. But how soon? Like a lot. Of, so I think a lot of times people think in their thirties because you know you're pretty stable then you have you know a pretty steady job mm -hmm. at that point, and you're like, okay, well I need to start saving for retirement. Is 30 even too late? Um, it's never too late. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. But honestly, when you first get that, your first real job, whether it's out of high school, out of, co out of college, that's when you should start paying yourself first. Okay. Um, my rule of thumb is to, uh, you know, if you, whatever, every dollar you make, try to save 20 cents. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you live a budgeted lifestyle, you, you may not uh, forget or lose or not, not being able to enjoy that 20 cents, it may not feel so painful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you say is a person's most precious uh, financial resource, and how do we protect that? Um, if you rely on new, on income and new savings, then you are your most precious resource. Mm -hmm. resource. Your ability to earn income. I think of income, and I sometimes will replace income with cash flow. That's your most precious resource. And there's four ways that that income can can disappear, mm -hmm. and that can be the most devastating. Tell thing. us, do they want to know how it can disappear? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, sadly, uh, it's kind of morbid, but death obviously is a, a permanent loss of income. You can get sick or injured and mm -hmm. disability. Uh, you can lose your job, and those three three things are involuntary. They're out of our control, right. mm -hmm. but they can truly devastate a family. Yeah. yeah. And the fourth way income goes to zero is voluntary. It's when we retire. Mm. So. We've got to protect that. And you can protect that through products like life insurance or disability insurance, but if you lose your job, there is no lose your job insurance. Yeah. So you have to save. You have to have access to money to kind of bridge the gap between yeah. jobs. When we're talking about saving, what is the percentage that one should save? Um, to be optimal, uh, my rule of thumb is between 15 and 20% of your earnings. And I know that may seem like an unrealistic goal if you're just getting started, but it doesn't have to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. But that would be, to, to walk away to retirement and not have to change your lifestyle, mm -hmm. I find that that's pretty much what you're gonna have to put away yeah. to, uh, to have a successful retirement. So, so, so I, I hear today that you're, t you're talking a lot about saving. I haven't heard you say anything about putting, uh, maybe investing, you know, uh, to, to maybe IRAs or Roth accounts or, mm -hmm. you know, in stocks. I haven't heard you say anything about that. Right. Is that still a good idea? Well, right. When I, when I, I guess when I say savings, mm -hmm. uh, investing is kind of, uh, okay. they're intertwined. Yeah. It's kind of creating financial balance. We don't have when all of our money at risk because by human nature, we're not, we don't like to take risk. I mean, you guys have a security system at your house. Mm -hmm. We all like security. Yeah. Um, but we don't, we also, it's risky to not have your money invested because interest rates and savings accounts right now don't even keep pace with inflation. So your money's actually losing spending yes. power. Yes. So it's really just having balance yeah. in, in life and in financial matters. Right. Finding and as a balance. financial planner, you talk about not putting all of your eggs in one basket. Right. What does that mean? So, um, well, well, there are risk-based assets mm -hmm. like the stock market, and then there are promise-based assets like CDs and things like that. So that would be a way to d differentiate and not have all your eggs in one basket. But there are also different tax strategies like uh, 401ks and tax-deferred strategies where we put money in, and when we pull it out, we owe taxes. But unfortunately, we don't know how much tax we'll owe because it's based on law mm -hmm. and current law at that time and your income, et cetera. Yeah. So there's tax deferred strategies, there's taxable strategies, and then there's tax free strategies. And so it's kind of taking, uh, choosing and having a balance between all three. Yeah. Mm. And how do we organize, um, I guess, budgeting and clearing debt? Huh. 
Yeah. How do we organize that, that, that? Yeah, it's that, that, like that, a prioritize. Is, is there a way to prioritize that? Like, what do you do? What do you do? You go with the most expensive thing first in terms of, you know, what's what's the greatest debt that you have? Do you pay that off first, or do you start with the smaller things and work your way up? Mm -hmm. Right. It's it's hard to tell because it's it's on a case by case scenario. Okay. But it's it's often not necessarily which one is carrying the highest interest rate, because it really boils down to cash flow, guys. It, it's in our financial life, all we're really trying to do is build uh, our net worth and build our balance sheet. And so, like the foundation of a house mm -hmm. is the, the most stable part of the house. And our, our financial house is, our cash flow is our foundation. Found, found found <laughs> so our money, you can only either save money or consume money. And when we save it, we're saving it to consume later. Yep. So we're, we're trying to build assets and at the same time pay down our debts and our, and our liabilities. To generate net net worth, yeah, and if you, it, it's going to be a, a mixture of both. If you just attack debt and something happens and there's no bucket to pull right. from to bridge a gap, so you really have to prioritize and just, it's case by case. I'm sorry, I can't give you a definitive. Yeah, no, but that. that's right. My case is bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you. Okay, good, good, good. You got one more thing. It's you a, got time. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, you know, okay. So for me, I would say. Um, I would rather pay off the the one that's costing me the most money with the highest interest rate because mm -hmm. over a period of time I'm going to spend more money on that particular mm -hmm, debt. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. In my opinion. Right. Yeah, and that that could that's valid and that could be the best way to to attack that debt. Um, another way to approach it maybe that debt let's say that you're attacking is a five hundred dollars a month and mm -hmm. you have another piece of debt that may have a smaller interest rate, but it's a thousand a month. Well, if you got rid of that sooner, that would free up a thousand dollars a month that then you could reallocate towards the other debt or towards savings or a combination of the two. Yeah. So it, again, it, it's, I really, really need to look at things holistically yeah. because every, every financial decision you make affects another. Yeah. And so I can't just isolate and microeconomically tell you what's right mm -hmm. or wrong. I have to see the big picture. Jeff, yeah. do you have a website that you can share with our viewers? Um, yes, I work for a regional firm out of Charlotte called Consolidated Planning. Um, and uh, the website cplanning.com. Cplanning.com. Well, yep. thank you so much, Jeff. We appreciate it. I'm I think we here. all know a little bit more. I feel good about it. I know. I thank love you. it.